English writer Ian McEwen has written 29 books, and until recently, I hadn't read a single one of them. And so the book that I chose to introduce myself to his au revoir maybe was a peculiar choice. I could have picked Atonement, I could have picked Saturday, or On Chesil Beach, any one of his more popular books that has solidified him as a, as a, solidified him as a, his reputation as a genius. Oh, did I say that? I hate that word. <sighs> okay, so here's a hot take you can quote me on. Every page of the book, Nutshell, is as smooth and smart as a duet between Big Daddy Kane and Lady Gaga. Hopefully I'm bringing in the history of hip hop and modern pop crowds to my English lit appreciation societies. These are overlapping sets, I believe. But seriously, Nutshell oozes with that self-satisfied, a bit smarmy, but sophisticated English prose that I just love so well. But more than that, at its heart, the thing that Nutshell has going for it, the thing that really carries it along, is a high-level premise I've never seen anywhere else before. Oh, <laughs> on the surface, it's something we've seen a million times. It's a modern retelling of Shakespeare, Hamlet to be specific. But in this case, the murder plot to kill the uncle is observed in utero and relayed to the reader by an unborn fetus. Let that sink in for a moment. Here, let me read the first line of the book to you. So here I am, upside down in a woman, arms patiently crossed, waiting. Waiting and wondering who I'm in, what I'm in for. And <laughs> here's the next sentence too. My eyes closed nostalgically when I remember how I once drifted in my translucent body bag, floated dreamily in the bubble of my thoughts through my private ocean in slow motion somersaults, colliding gently against the transparent bounds of my confinement, the confining membrane that vibrated with, even as it muffled, the voices of conspirators in vile enterprise. Matter of fact, it's tempting just to read the whole book and let that stand as my review. I love every word of this book. Okay, so the fetus, I don't want to keep saying that. Um, the fetus is unnamed and uh, the child doesn't have um, an identified sex as far as I remember. But I kind of identified the, the baby as, as, as male, probably because Ian McKellen is male and it kind of had that voice in my head. So from here on out, I'm just going to refer to the, to the fetus as the child or as to he, just so there's no confusion. Are we cool with that? Or do we want to keep talking about the fetus? The child's mother, Trudy, has tired of her husband, John. And John is the father of the child. Trudy has taken up with Claude, John's brother. Together, Claude and Trudy cook up a plot to murder John for all the typical reasons we've seen a million times in books. The child then overhears every word of this murder plot from the mother's uterus. And he understands all of this, for nothing spoken outside of the mother is unintelligible to the child. He understands world politics, socioeconomical statuses, and the nature of cancer, and so much more. And that's to say nothing, of course, of black and white frank discussions of murder. And it's Ian McEwan's very cheeky literary trick that he doesn't try to explain this level of insight as possessed by his prenatal protagonist. <laughs> okay, I get the feeling that I'm, I've already maybe lost some of you, that you're not buying this premise. Preposterous, you say. And I say, well, no shit. Of course it's preposterous. But let it go, okay? Like, we allow so many high-level preposterous premises to exist in film. And we don't even bat an eyelash. When there is a dinosaur theme park and the T-Rex escapes his pen, not only do we buy into it, but it scares us. And when Bruce Willis and Steve Buscemi are drilling on an iron asteroid to set explosives to 
knock the asteroid off of its killer collision path with Earth. We don't say preposterous. <laughs> okay, maybe we do. <laughs> in that case, we do. Okay, but seriously, who didn't get choked up in this scenario? You've got a young kid who gets bit by a radioactive spider, and he's spending his last dying moments with his father mentor who's dressed in a robot suit floating out in space with a wizard after a demigod has finished his rock collection and he snaps his fingers and kills all sentient life and just turns them to dust. Who didn't cry in that moment? We allow these premises to affect us. We buy in. It's just that in nutshell, the rest of the book is written so straight that it makes this weird high-level premise a little hard to accept. My point is, I think you should just take the red pill and see how deep the rabbit hole goes. I was just really taken in by this unique premise and for all the fresh jokes it allows for along the way. And it's not often that the blurbs on the back of the book are not only apropos, but also understated. When fantastically entertaining and frequently hilarious is an understatement, what else am I even supposed to say? Well, I do have an idea about what I'm supposed to say, and let me try to analyze this book on a serious note just a little bit deeper, because McGowan, for about eight pages or so, gets kind of serious. So early on, Trudy is kind of hit with this existential crisis, and she worries that the world is collapsing under the weight of mankind's many indiscretions, which she calls infantile. And so there's a passage that says this. Anxiously I finger my cord. It serves for worry beads. Wait, I thought. While it lies ahead of me, what's wrong with infantile? I've heard enough of such talks to have learned to summon the counter-arguments. Pessimism is too easy, even delicious, the badge and plume of intellectuals everywhere. It absolves the thinking classes of solutions. The nature of humanity, then, is to create calamity and to possess cleverness in equal measure. Progress is the seesaw between those two things. But this is a simple observation of reality that we've all made, and it is so obvious that even an unborn child inside his mother's womb can see it for himself, that the dichotomy of our infantile and clever natures are forever warring with each other. And while this argument is made early on in the novel, quickly but thoroughly, we are then quickly whisked away to all the breezy jokes and all of the amusing melodrama that Ian McEwan can cook up in this high-level premise. But through all that, we see humanity's clever and infantile nature in that tug of war played out through Trudy and Claude's plot to murder John, all watched over by our sleepy Hamlet insert. And so it's been a while since I've read Hamlet, and so let's look at him as a character for a minute, and let's look at the comparisons between this unborn child and Shakespeare's Hamlet. <laughs> Um, so obviously, on the surface, there's no similarities. But, but as the child's character is personified, we definitely see some parallels. Like I said, it's been a while, but who can forget Hamlet as the loner, prone to soliloquizing? The deeply introspective and contemplative, mysterious character that is Hamlet. The unborn child in nutshell, himself is obsessively contemplative and has a lot to say about his father John, Uncle Claude, and Mother Trudy. So there's a lot going on here. It's way more than just a gimmick. And if you allow it, there's quite a lot to unpack. Nutshell is as meaningful as it is amusing. And it's the most successful experimental novel that I've read probably in years. And of all the books that I've read and reviewed on this channel so far, which isn't that many, but I would say that uh, Nutshell is the one that I recommend the most and to the most people, at least so far. Okay, so that was 2016's Nutshell. In 2022, Ian McEwen wrote 
Lessons, which I plan to read here coming up later this year. So if you want to catch my review of this book, make sure you stick around and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss that. And if you like this video, let me know. Hit the like button. Helps my channel a lot too. Hey, a quick note for me, the editor of this video, I forgot to mention that I now have an Instagram account, so run over to Instagram, find me at Gronsky Books, and you can keep up with all of my current reads, and you can expect to find videos, at least a short or maybe a long-form video, on all of these books that I post. All right, that'll about do it. See you in the next one. Oh, that almost spilled. Oh, that was so close.